Okay, had to get that figured out. So you just saw my new coffee cup there. It's my new favorite coffee cup. Here it is. Oh, there. Let's see if I can hold it so you can see it. Those of you who know me know I have a gimpy right hand. There it is. I love this mug. Awesome. I love coffee and I love that mug. Thank you to Kristen. Kristen created that logo and we had to have a lot of discussions with Warner Brothers about that. We didn't want to make them unhappy. They don't have any legal right over the anti-possession symbol, but we have always wanted to have a good relationship with Warner Brothers. And it was difficult. And I found myself at one point on the phone with four lawyers from Warner Brothers just trying to tell them that we wanted to keep them happy. And in the end we were, but that was one of many long processes we had to go through uh, to get this movie made. And Kristen came up with that logo. And I absolutely love it. And it's, it's can't see it. <laughs> yeah. It's on the back of this shirt that I'm wearing right now. My new shirt. And you know you can get all this stuff at our website, www.spnfanmovie.com. Thank you, Betty, for making that work. All right. This is the last of our little fireside chats before we actually premiere the movie. So I just want everybody to understand it. There are a lot of things that we've said, but we've had to say them over and over again because we keep getting a bigger and bigger audience. So I'm sorry to my friends who got in early. I'm going to repeat some of the stuff that you already know, but I want to say this because I've been getting questions on Twitter and via email asking me questions about stuff, and I'm going to try to answer all of those questions. So we originally started out to make a movie because Cliff said to me, hey, this, this fandom thing is... It's really incredible. Of course, both of us had worked in, in film and television for a couple of decades. Uh, we start, Both of us started as actors, and then I went on to uh, do some other stuff, and Cliff, as you know, became the most famous bodyguard in Canada, <clears throat> working for people such as Kurt Russell, Sharon Stone, Pamela Anderson, uh, Al Pacino, Morgan Freeman, Justin Timberlake, Selena Gomez, uh, you know, just tons and tons of different people. So he knew a lot about fans, and uh, when he started working for Supernatural, he realized there was just something different about it. And he started going to these conventions, and Jared and Jensen made the conventions different. They had an intimate interaction with the fans that no other stars had ever had before. I, myself, as an actor on Smallville, had been to a, a convention in, uh, in, in England. And, in fact, Wayne Munn, who still runs those conventions over there, Rogue Events, can tell you this is true, that back in the day, 2006-ish, when Supernatural was just starting out, none of the top actors went to the conventions. None of them. I mean, myself and, and Margot Kidder at that first one, Wayne, maybe you remember this, <laughs> myself and Margot Kidder were the headliners, you know, and we were peripheral actors at best, you know, guest stars. Anyway, Jared and Jensen changed all that, as you know. Cliff came to me and said, this is a phenomenon that has never occurred before. Social media plays a role. Why don't we make a movie about this? I really think it would make a good documentary movie. And he convinced me to get involved. I had to straighten out some things in my life. So for the past three and a half years, it took him a year to convince me. For the past three and a half years, I've been involved in this. Uh, various cameras, various cameramen, various crews. I don't know, dozen and a half different cities around North America. You know we've been traveling all over the place. And then we met Jason Fisher, who's the production coordinator on Supernatural. But he also is one of the owners of a distribution, a fledgling distribution company called Frostbite Pictures, which, as you know, is doing really well now. They just got a contract to make three more made-for-TV movies. And Jason said, well, there are some things we can do, but you know you need money for post-production. You need money for marketing, or it's just never going to happen, because it was all being funded out of my MasterCard. And uh, the movie already owed me a lot of money. I was, you know, starting to get in debt. But we wanted to get it made. So I think that was, yes, it was, a year ago, in fact. And Jason introduced me to the concept of the web series. And he said, what if you make a web series? It costs almost nothing to get it out there on the air. You can, you can do that yourself. We can work out something and put it on our own website. He said, what if you do that and you run an Indiegogo campaign and we, we use the series to get the movie made. Hmm. That was a really good idea. You know why it was a good idea? Because it friggin' worked. Because last night I saw, <laughs> pretty happy about this, 
an almost finished version of the movie. Three and a half friggin' years shooting all around the country. It's almost done. And we're going to have it for you March 10th in Las Vegas. And all the people up there who said we couldn't do it or there was no reason to do it or we were trying to do it to make money. There's a very simple phrase that sums up my feeling towards you. Fuck you. Okay? There I said it. Because I made it for all the people who want to see it. If you don't want to see it, don't watch it. I really don't give a shit. I have enough friends, me and my brother, have enough friends and enough people out there that we did this for. Hell, even if it was 12 people, we would have done it. Because we did it for ourselves and we did it for our friends. If you want to watch it, watch it. Otherwise, like I said, I don't give a shit. But don't try to communicate to me what you don't like about it or why we didn't do it. Because, mute, mute. I'm not listening. Sorry. We made it for very selfish reasons. We made it for ourselves. We made it for our friends. So March 10th in Las Vegas. i got to look at my notes. Sorry, I'm old. I forget stuff. First of all, Cliff is in Nashville. So he's doing the convention down there. So that's why he's not here at the fireside chat. Sorry about that. Jason has stuff to do. He often has stuff to do on Saturdays. He's a dad, and those things come first, right? So he's going to come out here tomorrow. We're going to finalize a few things. So March 10th in Las Vegas, you know, at the convention, Vegas Con, 50 bucks, you can come to the, uh, the very first showing of the movie. And I saw it last night, and if you've seen anything at the series, you're going to like it. I absolutely guarantee it. Uh, the first 250 people are going to get a grab bag that we put together. And that's uh, actually, I think, Janet and her daughter, Lindsay, and maybe Carrie are going to help her make those. Anyway, that's the rumor I hear from Liza. And Liza has been accumulating the stuff in Janet's house, and they're going to put them together in a bag for all of you guys. The first 250 people through the door in Las Vegas, March 10th, at the convention, at the screening, where we are going to show Supernatural Fandom, the movie. We are also, oh, I wanted to talk to you about the web, the web Fest because Jason Fisher first told me about web series and I went to Vancouver Web Fest. Suzette runs that. And that was March last year. So it is pretty much exactly a year since the idea of a web, cast was, a web, uh, web series was revealed to me. I had no idea what it was. So we're going to go to Vancouver Web Fest. Uh, March the 18th to 20th, and we're going to have a big party with Frostbite. But we're going back to the Web Fest, the Vancouver Web Fest, very differently. We're, in fact, nominated for Best Reality Series, and we've submitted a couple of our episodes. Episode 6, as you know, is very dramatic, and we're hoping that uh, we can come away with a trophy. And they made these really cool Swarovski uh, crystal trophies, so that would be cool. We've been, well, we, Kristen has been submitting us to other web fests. This is just a bonus, bonus spin-off thing we did not think was going to happen. We had no idea. Kristen has been submitting us to other web fests. Lo and behold, they like us too. So we already got another one from, who did we get it from, Kristen? Hollyweb? Yeah, Hollyweb. But she submitted us to a ton of them. So we're going to try to go to some of those. If I don't go, then Jason's going to go. Or Cliff's really busy, as you guys know, on the weekends. He's out with Jared and Jensen. Um, but we're going to try to have somebody at, at these web fests if you happen to go to them. And they're usually fairly small events. They're not like big uh, film festivals. In fact, they remind me of film festivals in the early days of film festivals. Yes, I am that old. Um, the, the Vancouver Web Fest reminds me of what the Vancouver Film Festival used to be like 20, 25 years ago. It's really cool, and it's only for people who really love and know about films and filmmaking. It's not high commercial value stuff. It's things from the heart. It's important stories. Yes, the production value is a little bit lower because it costs you hundreds of thousands of dollars to finish off a film. But you know, and I know, that what really matters is the story. And that's what got us on this journey. The guys who made Catfish made it with iPhones and little teeny little ordinary cameras. And those guys said to us, don't worry about production value. If it's a good story, it's a good story. It will be successful. People will want to watch it. Just start shooting. So we did. And so we got our premiere March 10th. 
We also, I want to mention, because I forget this, Kristen, Becky, Liza, Vinny, Betty, Taylor, Kat, Bree, Dawn, the translation teams, and all of our families, because obviously Cliff and I could not have done this by ourselves. And, of course, the amazing flipper, Jason Fisher. Never would have happened without him. We were at a loss as to how to get this to you. I knew how to make it. Cliff knew what it was. He knew the story. We didn't know how to get it to you. Jason got it to you. I want to also tell you something. We've had a lot of support from people. Obviously, Jared and Jensen were in on it right away. Uh, three and a half years ago, I spoke to both of them. They said, tell us whatever you want. We want this story to get out there, and we will help you with that. So they've supported us since then. When I first spoke to Misha, Mark, Rob, and Richard, um, they were behind it right away. Everybody else came along willingly, but those were the core people who started us off on the path. And I want to thank all the rest of the cast, people like Kim Rhodes, <laughs> you know, and Nikki. Uh, I, 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 sorry, I can't name you all. There's just too many cast members. You're going to see them all in the movie. We put every single cast member that we had interviewed in the movie. They're all in the movie. Um, one good example, a story I always wanted to tell, I don't know if I ever told it properly, but Jeffrey Dean Morgan, who isn't involved in social media, I had to talk to him uh, on the phone, <laughs> yes, um, right away, was talking to Cliff and said, yeah, yeah, I want to do that, for sure. I never, I didn't know the man. So I went to Los Angeles, and as you know, I interviewed a bunch of people there in June last year. I just rented a, a boardroom in the hotel, hired a little crew, and we interviewed a bunch of people, Kim Rhodes, Jim Beaver, Rosick Chow, uh, Rick Worthy. What a, what a nice guy. He's up here now making the magicians. Wow. Great guy. I've met some awfully nice people. Elena Huffman, Nikki, Catherine Boucher, uh, Sam. Um, anyway, Jeffrey Dean Morgan was working very hard. He's working a five-day week, and you know that in film, 12, days, 12 hours is a pretty normal day. So Jeffrey's working like crazy on this series, Monday to Friday. We're going to do the interviews on Saturday from 8 to 5 at the, Hollywood, uh, the Hilton Gardens in Hollywood. And Jeffrey also had an ADR session on the Saturday. And ADR is where you go and you look at yourself up on the screen, and you say your dialogue again, and you try to match your own lips because the sound recording was off or they want to change a word or whatever that is. So Jeffrey has this all day ADR session, which is, just, is exhausting in itself. And he's already shot for five long days. And he says, no, I want to do it. Can I come over anytime I want? I said, yep, we'll be there. You just come on over and uh, we'll interview you. And he got on his motorcycle during his lunch break of this ADR session, rode across Hollywood to where we were. Came into the hotel and said, I'm here, you know, uh, can we do the interview? All the other actors said, yep, let him go, you know, let him jump the line, so to speak. And he did his interview, and if you've seen it, he's an amazing man, an amazing speaker, a very passionate, caring guy, really smart. I loved his interview. It really set the stage for everything else. And then when it was over, he hopped on his motorcycle and rode away. I haven't seen him since. Anyway, just a great guy. That's, a, that's one little story I thought I wanted to tell. Another is that I, uh, I asked Eric Kripke if I could interview him. And he's a very busy man. He's, he's doing another series. And uh, that's too bad. We're still going to try to set it up if we could squeeze it in, but our timeline's pretty much done. Um, but he sent me back a couple emails that were very complimentary and said that he loved what we were doing. He had heard about it and seen some of it and uh, just thought it was a great thing. And of course, you know, it's pretty much a tribute to something that he created. So anyway, there you go. Now let me, let me just page down here so I make sure. I know I've been talking for a long time. I've got a couple things to cover. Okay, Vegas March 10th for sure. But we also have a Vancouver premiere party uh, April the 9th and an LA premiere party uh, the th April the 30th. Now those are screenings prior to any distribution uh, so you'll get to see them in advance but they are also amazing events organized and set up by Taylor Dryden uh, who uh, 
has lots of help from Betty and other people, but Taylor doesn't put on bad events. If you have ever been to anything that she organizes, you know it's one of the best times you ever have. So if you're interested in coming to those, I encourage you to. If you want to check out the venues for the screenings and the, uh, and the after party, um, those things are available. You've probably seen Liza tweeting about them, but you can also go to our website, www.twosharksmedia.com, and you can find out about that stuff. If you go to those, you will see me, and you will see Cliff, and you will see Jason. You can ask us questions. We can do selfies and hugs, and we're going to hang around all night, have a few drinks, and talk about the making of the movie. You can ask us any question you want. If you're interested in buying any of the merchandise, we still have a few bills to pay. Uh, or if you just think the stuff is cool like we do, go to www.spnfanmovie.com, or you can buy the merchandise, or you can still buy the series. And thank you, thank you from the bottom of my heart for all you people who bought the series in advance and bought merchandise because without you, no exaggeration, we could not have made this movie. And Ian McLeod, our absolute superhero of a, a, uh, an editor, is in fact working right now and I'll be communicating with him later today and over the past couple of days, over the next couple of days right up until we bring a copy of the movie to you in Las Vegas. That's a lot of work over a lot of time and a lot of commitment. So Ian's a good guy. And guess what? He's coming to Las Vegas. So you guys who are there in Las Vegas can meet Ian, the guy who actually edited all the clips together. So make sure you thank him if you like the movie. All right. I think that's it. So I'm sorry Cliff and Jason couldn't be here. You just had to listen to me. And uh, I don't know how many more of these uh, we're going to try to do, but check with us in two weeks on Saturday morning at 9 o'clock Pacific Standard Time, and we'll see if maybe we can get uh, Flipper and uh, the Red Shark here. So, from Blue Shark, thank you. We made a movie. <laughs>